Okay, so you may not recognize me. Do you? Oh my goodness. It has been forever since I recorded a video. Well, actually, I take that back. I'll tell you all about it in the video. So for everyone, whether you are new or old, this is Dana with the Freedom Please channel and EssenceOfMe.com. I am going to do probably just like a quick mini update and show you all some stuff that I'm working on right now because I just felt like it has been way too long. And I may even add in some other footage at the end, but I'm not going to mention it. But if you see it, you'll know that's what it is. So if you're interested in sticking around, well, then you all know what to do. Grab you a snack, a beverage, get comfortable, grab a project, and then let's get into this video. If not, then I will hopefully see you all on the next video. Before you leave, though, if there's something that you would like for me to record other than a tutorial, because a girl don't got time for that, leave it in the comments section. Questions or anything so that it'll give me some ideas to keep things moving without a whole lot of editing. So anyway, for everybody else, let's get this party started. See you in a bit. with the Freedom Please channel in EssenceOfMe.com. I'm coming to you all today and I've been lost in the sauce. <laughs> I don't even have anything to say about it. I, I can make a, no, anything that I would say would be legitimate and it wouldn't even be making up an excuse. It's just the reality that it has been what it has been. Um, in the last, and I'm so glad that I recorded the last video, letting you all know that some things were changing with my time, because that's really what's been going on. Um, between, I'm taking classes for my biblical counseling and reading for that class and going to that class has been extremely beneficial, heavy, a lot of reading, but I'm enjoying every single minute of it, um, and what else? Um, I also, um, a daughter has started uh, doing dance and it has taken up a lot of our extra like free time and she's enjoying it, but it is a big adjustment. It's a big adjustment. And then um, also I've recently accepted a new position for my area and I don't know, it's out, well, it's still me working at home. Um, it is in the area of um, biblical teaching and instruction and support. And so that is, is taking up quite a bit of time and it will probably take just, it will be consistent at least for the foreseeable future. Like I'll be continuing to do work, but for the next few, probably about the next month or so, it'll be what I'll, my, the work that I'll need to do plus training. And so that will be interesting, but it's been really great. So with all of that said, have I been crafting? Because this is a crafter's vlog. Number one, I'm so glad I changed that channel. I guess that's the, the title of this vlog. Um, I have been crafting, but it has been on a get it done, do the next thing type basis. So in the last video, this is probably going to be a ramble. Please catch the catch what you can catch. I, I don't have any notes. I'm just going to try to catch it up. So um, the last video, I think I told you all that I am taking this advanced quilting class. I showed you all some of the work that I was doing for that class. Um, 
if you if I did post some pictures on Instagram, but I haven't even been on like Facebook, Instagram that much. It's been crazy. Um, so I just been really having to be very regimented to stick to things. And so anyways, um, I've been going to that class every two to three weeks, which has been wonderful. I'm learning so much. And the, the best way that I can describe this class is that it's really teaching me to be a proficient quilter. Um, my accuracy and my piecing has come so far in these past couple of months. Um, I also am now sewing with little pieces. For anybody that has been around my channel for any length of time, you know me and little whatever always have tension. Little needles, little crochet hook, little thread. Now, over the years, I have evolved to embrace it. Um, and so, apparently, that is so with my quilting as well. And so, um, I'll show you all. This is my most recent piece that I'm actually going to, I need to finish today for class. But here it is. These were two and a half, no. Uh, how big? I think they're two and a half, no, two inch. Best way to find out. I can't remember. I just trying to get her done. Get her done is my motto for right now. Just get it done. Okay. Two inch, two inch squares. And there are four triangles within that two inch square. So that lets you know. And it felt like it was a million pieces. Like I was sewing for forever. And that's one of the borders that I gotta, I'm got. i going to put on my quilt today. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I plan to post a picture there. And I will post one on Essence of Me um, when I finish if it's not too late. So, yes, that class has been going great. I do have an update on the sweater. I'm still needing this sweater. I told y'all, I believe that with this quilting class, if I did not have to go to class, it would be just like everything else where I wouldn't probably just make a, a scheduled time to do it. But since I have the, to go to class and I really enjoy, actually, I'm going to back up. In this particular class, what I find so um, rewarding, other than the instru instruction, which is great, and the instructor, she's fantastic. But uh, when we're in class, after she goes over the instruction, there's a show and tell time where she goes through each student. So it's not like, oh, do you want to? It's like she goes through each student and she puts up their work that they've done since we've been gone. And if you don't have anything, you don't have to show. Or if you want to pass, you can pass. But most students, unless they don't have anything, will show something. And it's been so beneficial because we all receive the same instructions. So for everyone to come back, it's like 20. We start off with like 27 people. So I'm probably thinking it's been like 24-ish that have come to every class, you know, people traveling and vacations and spring break and so on and so forth. Um, it's caused it to be a little bit of a fluctuation week, uh, class to class, but for the most part, it's been about 24 or so students. And to see each of these students bring something back that is totally different, like that no one person's project probably has any similarity other than the selection alike has been so interesting. The the oper the the selection process. It reminds me. I don't even know if they make these books for kids anymore. Tell me in the comment section if you remember. But there used to be these mystery books. Um, when I was in, I probably was in elementary and junior high where you could choose what you wanted to do at the end of the book. I don't remember what they were called, but you could choose what you wanted to do. Like you can go to this page if you wanted this to happen or that page if you wanted that to happen. And it reminds me of that because she gives you these options and you choose and then you add it to what you already have. And since it's all based on your own personal quilt, well then you choose the option and you have the same steps, but the number of pieces that you need 
will be different because your size is different. Your, um, what else would make it different? Your fabric selection, of course, would be different. And so it's just evolving so nicely. And so in the end, I just feel like it's just making me a much better quilter. Working with the smaller pieces, even though it's a lot more work because my piece is, is getting pretty big. That's a whole nother subject. <laughs> my book is getting so big. But it um it's I'm just learning so much. Learning so so much. Um, and so that's that. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today, adding it on for class tomorrow. I'm gonna show you all an update on my my sweater, which looks fantastic. I can't no, I can wait, but I'm looking forward to making another one for myself because I love this color. And, um, and since I chose my favorite yarn, like it's a it's exciting to do, but it's hard to get to because it's so big and it's not mobile, which I told you all before, but I'm going to show you, I don't know why my face is itching right now, but it is, but here we go. How are you all doing? It's been so long and I've even recorded videos, but since they're not edited, like I did a haul, like I received a donation for yarn. So I have a video for that. And I actually may make that video go live because I do believe I did edit that video. I just haven't scheduled it. I also had like a mini haul video from my birthday. And it's been a while. I can tell you a few of the things that I got. And if you all are still interested in seeing it, let me know in the comment section. So y'all got to say something and I'll, and I will <laughs> get to editing that video. So here it is. This is going to be probably the, the last time I'll be able to do a sneak peek because I don't believe the recipient watches my channel. I don't believe she watches it, but I have posted pictures, which is so if she had she does watch my videos, then she will see it. But I don't want the rest of it to be shown until she receives it. And then I will take pictures and go from there. So here is wait. I got to be very careful because, okay, so here it is. Now, what's so interesting, like I finished the collar and I'm working on the sleeves. So this is one and I, this one's still not going. I think it will be really cute even without the sleeves. And I've been really thinking about that. Now, this, her sweater, I did make it different than any of the other sweaters that I've done. And I added this addition, the additional detail on the back. It's kind of hard to see because it's so dark. And <laughs> I don't know. I hope she likes it. But one of the things that I've realized in this, I mean, in the past, I've made things for people, but nothing like this. Um, of this like making sweaters a labor of love like it makes me think about all the people how grandmothers would make sweaters for all their grandkids like I, I guess if you don't I don't know it's just a lot of work but it also makes me feel so like I don't know like on pins and needles because like little things like if you make anything anything handmade it is not like having a, a store-bought object. You know, you have little imperfections where, you know, because this is hand-knitted, if something snags, it's going to pull at it. Now, and of course, you can kind of pull and tug on it to kind of make the stitches settle back into place, but it still does. You know, uh, things like yarn changes, ch color change, uh, when the yarn runs out and you add a new skein of yarn, you have those places that always make me feel like so, like, conscious. But I can't do anything about it. Like that's a part of the process. It's a part of making this. And and while I'm doing it, I'm always thinking about the person and being mindful of them and thinking about them and, and praying for them. And it's just something that I do because I just can't help think about the person because I'm making, you're spending hours and hours and hours and days and months on <laughs> a project. So it's just the part of the process. Uh, but in the end, I look forward to finishing it. But for now, I just got to enjoy the process. And that's going to be something I want to talk about at the end of the video. So let me get to uh, project number two that I want to show you. Oh, I didn't bring it. Um, because that one is, hasn't been mobile. I've been working on my scarf. The other one, the tricolored scarf, that's very... Um, 
I guess technically, I guess it'd be granulated, but very, uh, ombre, my ombre scarf. I've been working on that. So because it's been great as I'm in training and on hold and all that other stuff. And lastly, for yarn projects, I have been working on this. Now, what is so interesting about this, I'm going to have to give props to right now because I recorded a video that has not been edited, but I received this yarn from Tink Yarn and they put up a post on their Instagram page saying, you know, they would like to send it out and if people would be interested in sharing with their channel. So I'm going to share this with you all. And I mean, it's not a sponsor or anything. They just wanted to share it. And if we would share it with our viewers that I recorded it and I also recorded me starting this sweater. I mean, this, this scarf. So, um, it's really very, very simple. And I've changed it up since when I did that too. You all know, I love to wing it. Like I just do. So if you all are interested in seeing that, let me know. It may be like, I just would have to make time to edit it, but I showed when I got the yarn and me opening it. I also showed a little mini tutorial of starting this scarf. And I even showed how I use my winder to take it from the um, Hanks into this cake. I did it in a cake. And so I, I recorded all of that. Like it's, it was going to be part of the Rockstar Challenge, but it's been, I haven't been able to do it. I just haven't, which I, I apologize for. But um, it's just been too crazy in a good way. So I don't want to say crazy. My days and my time has been so full. It's just been happening so fast, which has been a blessing. But it's like been making my head spin like, wow, it's really happening. Like it's really happening. Um, what else? Okay, that so that was the crochet. That is the knit. knit. Oh, I showed you some of my quilting. And what really prompted me to come on today, and then I'll get to a topic that I want to talk about, um, and that is free motion quilting. I told you all at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year that I wanted to work on my free motion quilting. I spent the quilt retreat that I went to not too long ago working on quilt tops. The particular classes that I selected were because I knew I wanted to do some free motion quilting practicing and I wanted to work on working my way through my fabric. And I was on a freeze, y'all. That freeze has been like in my rearview mirror because number one, my birthday, so I bought fabric. And my son bought me fabric because they give me gift cards and stuff like that for my birthday. And also because I have, uh, because of this whole pacing thing, like I've really been thinking about in advance, selecting the projects that I want to make for some holiday projects and gifts and looking out for stuff for that. But not just, I don't know, not just anything, but just main things that I knew I needed to get. With that said, I, I don't know why I just feel like I'm so tired of being in a class all day. But today I went to a class and this was the final class for the gifts that my kids got um, bought me for Christmas. And this final class was for a free motion quilting class. Now I thought the class was going to be an advanced class because I do have some experience with free motion quilting. If you're not familiar with that, I guess I should say that. The free motion quilting is, if you've ever seen a quilt, and I'll show you an example in a second, if you've ever seen a quilt and you see the top stitching, that can be done in many ways. That can be done just with straight stitching with your sewing machine. It can be done by hand, which is the way it was done in the past, which is called hand quilting. It can be done with your walking foot, and, and some machines come with this big chunky looking uh, foot, but with that a walking foot does is it allows you to put thick layers through and it pushes them through evenly and so you can do it with your walking foot and usually with that you've got to do straight lines diagonals slight curves because you do not get the um, ease of movement um, like you receive when you do free motion quilting which is using a darting sometimes it's called a darting foot and it allows you to move 
in multiple directions. You can move left, right, front, and back versus with a standard um, so, uh, presser foot, you only go in one direction. You go front to back. And with the darting foot, you can go in any direction. And what that allows you to do is do that top stitching in various designs. It can be very complex. Like some people do what's called a, I don't know, an all over design, which can be, I don't know, stars and hearts and uh, motifs and feathers and all this wonderful stuff, this intricate stuff. Everything from being very, very detailed to very simplistic. But the, the benefits of using a darting foot and doing the free motion, that's, what, that's why it's called free motion. You're not limited by just front to back of a standard uh, presser foot. The benefit is that you can do all of these complex designs. And my challenge has been to learn how to do them on my sewing machine. And there's a lot of people that do it on a traditional, and what you'll call a domestic sewing machine, a home sewing machine, because you can go all the way to uh, a mid arm to a long arm. And all of those things just mean a mid arm is maybe a stationary machine, but has a deeper throat, which is the area in which the, your quilt kind of can be rolled up or pushed in so that you can maneuver those larger projects to what's called a long arm. And I'm sure they have other arms too, but those are the ones I know. A long arm is on a frame and the unlike others where the you move the quilt, whether large or small, you move the quilt and the needle and the machine are stationary. With the long arm, the machine moves and the quilt is stationary. And so um, I want to learn how to do it on my machine. And that's what free motion quilting is. So I know that was like a tutorial, right? <laughs> so um, this was the last class that my kids bought. And it was a free motion class. I thought it was advanced, but it wasn't. Um, it was okay, though, because I learned a lot. And I just utilized the time to do what I wanted to do, which was practice. I have... Oh, I'll show you one top that I just recently finished for um, a friend. But um, I have those tops ready. And now it's time for me to start working them up. And when you go from a top, which is your quilt being pieced, to um, it being prepared for quilting, because the free motion, the top stitching is really technically quilting. And if you're looking down because you're working, I just did quotation marks. That's quilting. So a quilt is being quilted, I guess. That's the way you would say it. <laughs> There's a process that you go from this single top, which is just your fabric being pieced together. It could be a panel, which is already pre-printed. You just put it together to being what's called sandwiched. You have your top, then you have your backing fabric, and then you add your batting. Actually, I can show you. That is so much better. I feel like I'm explaining it, even though I see the pictures in my brain. So I'm going to show you an example. This is a sample quilt that I put together for the class that I went to today. I told you that there is a top, which this is uh, there. This is a top, but this top was just plain. I, it's not pieced, so really would be considered a whole cloth quilt, but we weren't supposed to piece. We just needed a blank surface to work on today. Then when you turn it into a quilt sandwich, quotation marks, there's a sandwich. It's a, the batting is added in the middle and then there's a backing. And I just used some fabric that I had um, in muslin for the top. But that's the process of making a quilt. So the class today, what she did is she went through different things that she wanted us to do. And she gave us this piece of uh, um, pre-quilted fabric and we just practiced in the whole class and we weren't expected to make anything other than practice various types of stitches we did um I'll show you in a little bit but we did like our name and we did c's and l's and e's because to practice the motion like the motion of doing it l is practicing curves and loops what else did we do we practiced particular stitches like stippling we which is kind of like 
I wish like I had a fancy thing, but it's like if you think of a fly or a bee, if you if if as they flew around you and they had like that little that little smoke coming out of their bottoms. <laughs> like those airplanes <laughs> that write stuff in the sky. <laughs> If if that were to happen, you would see like this crazy kind of whimsical pattern in the air. And that's kind of what meandering or stippling is. Then there's also, we did feathers. I'm going to show you what feathers are. My feathers were whack, but hey, I had to practice. And then I just started doing stuff because she was talking about some stuff and I was listening, but I just, yeah, I just went to practice. So. Here's what I created, my masterpiece. You can't really see it that much, I guess. So let's see what I have. I'm gonna point out specifically. We practice our names. Um, I'm gonna see if I turn off this light, that'll make it better. It's gonna be a little bit dark, okay? But I'm, it'll be easier to see. We were supposed to have um, a, a a thread that contrasts with the fabric so that you can see. You normally wouldn't do this. You would normally have like a cream thread. So I have a green thread. And so we practice our names. Wait, you see my name there and there. Wait, oh, I'm sorry, it's the wrong direction. You see that there. And I practice my name here as well with an echo. And then we practice, I told you E's and L's, and here they go, like loops. See there? And then after I did loops, because I was tired of doing loops, I did it kind of like what I told you about with the bumblebee. Like I did something that looked kind of like a bug there. And then I did loops. And then I practiced hearts. See heart? There's a heart there. And there's some hearts and some, like I thought, like kind of like a butterfly or a bug. Where was it? Oh, there it is. And flowers. And then we practice seas were like ocean waves and I practice those. And then I just started getting some ideas from some stuff I saw in other classes. And I'll just hold that up in a second. Oh, it's coming from the back. Um, what else? Oh, um, okay. And I'm just going to point out some stuff. Okay. So there were some more flowers and just some, some stuff. I practiced some pebbles, which were not that good, but it was practice. And I practiced this little thing that has no name. I just thought something that would be probably really pretty to cover a whole quilt, which is this little, just little thing over here. Then I practiced some stars. Let's see, wait. I'm gonna fold this back. Let's see. Um, hmm. See the stars, there's stars. And I tried to do this flower, but it didn't turn out very well. <laughs> and what else? Uh, oh, gift boxes. Here, let me try to get to it a little bit better. Let's see, where is it? Oh, right there. See the gift boxes and, and a lot of this was all continuous stitch, which means I didn't start and stop a lot unless I ran out of bobbin, which happened quite often. What else? Uh, oh, then I started getting creative because I was just trying to use up the space and I started trying to make little teacups. Okay. This was the first one, which is the one I liked the most. See there, I felt like that little tea, the heart it would look kind of like a tea bag. And then I made this one and then the last one, which just went downhill fast. And that's pretty much it. So this is it. We also did, and that's, and I'm going to sit in the dark for just a little bit longer. Because I said I would show you my feathers. My feathers were not very good because they were not marked. I think if I would have marked them, it would have helped. But I was still trying to get the hang of the flow. And I just didn't get, I kind of got it, but I need to work on it. So I'm going to use this as a practice piece. 
And then I also worked on flowers. They were working on something else, but I just wanted to try flowers because I want to use these to quilt on a quilt that I have coming up. And I just tried different fillers inside of the flowers. I even tried different variation of leaves like, um, where is it? Here's one. Here's one. So that was that. There. So I think that's it. Okay, I said I was going to show you this last top. So let me grab it. Just one second. I'm going to just stand up. and show you it. That's it. This top, <laughs> it's kind of one of those times when, in true Dana fashion, I wing it. <laughs> and once I put it up on my design board, I did not like the way that it looked with my fabric choices, the color choices. It just didn't look good with the design that I came up with. So I just had to change it up a little bit. And I want to do some quilting on top of it before I, I turn it over. And so that's all of my crafting. Let me know if you have any comments about it, questions. What do you think? I, do you all notice my progress? Like I've really progressed and I'm enjoying it. So the topic that I want to talk about before, because we are already 30 minutes in, before I go, is one of the things um, that I've been thinking a lot about is some of the things that I have learned um, about life from being a crafter, um, about let me go ahead and issue this caveat so I don't have to keep saying it. Some of the stuff I may repeat because I've recorded videos but haven't edited them and so I don't know if it was a video that I put up or not. So if it's a repeat, just know that's why. Okay, so back to the regular <laughs> schedule program. So a few weeks, no, longer than that, like a month or so ago, I did a, uh, a journal class at church, um, a journaling class. And it was so funny because I taught about how to do journaling, like how to write, like if you, if you want to write journal. And then I also do, did a segment on if you wanted to do like an art journal, like Bible journaling, like I told you all about before. And lastly, I kind of did something if you wanted to do coloring or like the adult coloring as a form of journaling or quiet time. Um, it's just a part of your morning quiet time and it was so much fun, but what it made me think about along with kind of these projects that I've been doing is how crafting really can teach you a lot about life and teach you a lot about yourself and not just, you know, how to match colors and how to pick fabric and all that type of stuff or how to select yarn. I don't know. Those kind of things. Because I think sometimes when people think about fabric or quilting, you think about those tangible skills. How to sew, how to select fabric, how to match, how to pair colors, how to contrast colors, um, how to select threads, the difference between fiber contents. When you think about yarn crafting, you think about fiber contents, you think about the weight of the yarn, the project selection, the ability to read patterns. Like those are tangible skills that if you didn't do anything else but learn those things are fantastic. Like they're great. I mean, learning how to read a pattern, I, I cannot stress that enough. And I've done little things here and there, but, you know, learning how to read a pattern can really just set you free in crafting. And not just because you can read a pattern, but because then you learn how things are structured in the different ways that you can come about an expected end just because people think differently. And when they share a pattern, they're sharing with you this blueprint of how they think. And so I could talk about that forever. With that said, one of the things that I have learned from crafting that has helped me in life is that you cannot rush the process. You cannot rush the process. 
And it, it makes me think about how in life and in crafting, you will always be offered or can find shortcuts. But shortcuts are never the same thing as going through the actual process. It's not the same thing. I'm going to give you an example, a tangible example, okay? So this fabric that was done in the class that was given was a pre-quilted fabric. You buy this fabric already sandwiched. You have a top, you have the backing, you have the batting. But look at this. It almost is see-through. It's 100% cotton, but it just doesn't feel the same. It feels like you can feel the stitches. It feels so almost thin. Now, this can be used, but it doesn't feel the same as this. There is a backing, there is a top, and there is batting. And, and because I went through the process of putting it together, I can select what type of batting do I want? What type of fabric do I want? What type of threading do I want? And that's a part of that process. When you go through life and you choose shortcuts you compromise things you compromise getting the things that you really want out of life you have to settle for things you don't learn the full process and if you don't learn the full process how do you know what can be changed and what can be tweaked and what can be maneuvered and what can be worked out specifically especially just for you you don't the other thing that about shortcuts that can find you on the, the short end of the stick or that feels like you would lack in, in learning or lack in what you receive from it is that, and this has been big for me to realize, when someone teaches you a shortcut, they are teaching you based on their learning style. They're teaching you based on what they know. They're teaching you based on what they like. That may have nothing to do with you. Now, you're doing it because it helped you to get to that end quicker. But there's a lot that's lost in the process. It's almost like thinking about Bible translations. I know. I'm talking about the Bible. Just work with me here. There are different translations that translate word for word what the Bible said from the original language to English. And then there's others that they just seek to give you a general understanding and there's so much that can be lost because they want to just give you a general idea than being specific in the delivery they do that for certain reasons which i get but you lose something when you lose when you miss out on that word by word translation the reason why I wanted to share that here today is because, you know, I like coming up with some, you know, good little topic at the end of all the crafting and all that. That's part of the girl chat. <laughs> the other reason is because crafting has showed me that you cannot rush the process. Yes, I could do a shortcut, but the shortcut will never make me as proficient or as efficient at anything as me learning the process and then figuring out things for myself and learning for myself. And then I can create my own shortcut from there. But if I ever need to go back to the basics, I will know how to do it in your crafting. You can have someone that let's say, let me think of a good shortcut. Arm knitting. That's a shortcut, right? I mean, well, no. Did I do the tutorial? I didn't do a tutorial, but I've done classes on arm knitting. Love it. It gets the job done. You can make a scarf. You can make a cowl. You can make a blanket all with arm knitting. Does arm knitting look like real knitting? I mean, technically it is real knitting, right? But does it look like the same knitting of you getting a standard size needle, standard size thread, and making a scarf or a cowl? No. Now, is it meant to be like an apples to apples comparison? No. But something is lost in that quicker method because a person that walks away from that class really doesn't fully know how to knit with needles. They know how to get an end product. But they don't know how to knit with needles. Now, if they really worked hard, could they figure it out from the, the, the arm knitting class? Yes. But it would take quite a bit to understand how do you hold the needles? How do you pick the needles? How do you pair the needles with the 
the yarn, you know, all of those things. You kind of bypass all of that and jump to just getting a project done. And what you miss in that is that you, 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 how do I make socks? Or how do I read a pattern? Or get what I'm saying? Okay. So in this, one of the biggest reasons why this kept bouncing around in my head it's because I'm working on the sweater. This sweater, I've been working, I've been working until one day it just had to click in my head. Dana, this sweater is going to be done when this sweater is done. Because I want the sweater done does not mean the sweater is going to be done. I can sit down and say, I'm not getting up from this bed or I'm not getting up from this couch. I'm going to do a movie though. I'm going to watch documentaries. I'm going to listen to audiobooks until this sweater is done. I can work eight hours, 10 hours. That sweater is still not done. That sweater is not going to be done until the sweater is done. I can't do anything else short of compromising what I've worked so hard to do until it is done. And I'm going to end this with having you think about your life. Where are you trying to rush the process? Where are you trying to opt for shortcuts over embracing the process, learning the process for yourself, and then making adjustments from your own knowledge? And what has been the cost of that? See, with everything in life, you are always going to have some sort of consequence. It can be good, it can be bad, but all of our decisions, we have to pay a cost. It may not be financial, it may be your time, it may be your peace, it may be your joy. You pay for that decision one way or another. So where in your life are you trying to skip the process and go with the shortcut? What has been your cost? And the last thing is, is it worth it? So with all of that said, I hope that this video has kind of sort of made up for the fact that your girl has been missing in action. My bad. <laughs> but I have been thinking for you all about you all. I've been praying for you all. The messages that I have been receiving, I've been trying my best to say up all my comments. Um, but you know, I just have to do the best that I can and for me, embrace the process, embrace the fact that this is where I am in my life. And knowing that at one time between the end of last year, and then we'll be heading out between the end of last year to the beginning of this year, I really wanted and desired like that I could just really do more crafting and do more with my channel and, and try to monetize it a little bit more so that I could do it more. But when I really had to be prayerful about what I wanted to do with my ministry stuff and realizing what it would take, I kind of had to embrace that process of what I would need to do to be more effective in my ministering to women on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis. And I honestly don't think about this channel being that far from that process for me and to me. But, um, you know, God has a way of doing things. And I I'm, I'm embracing the process. So in the comment section, uh, let me know if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything that I have shared. Let me know if you don't mind and if it's not sharing too much of your tea. <laughs> somewhere in your life where you've had to realize the difference between a pro embracing the process even though it may take you a while versus shortcuts and um, I hope that this message has been beneficial and if you don't want to share that just say girl you was talking to me in the comments I look forward to talking with you all hopefully sooner than later I'm going to try my best to not have that long of a stretch of course um, and then working on hopefully getting those other videos up as soon as I can. But for now, have a wonderful day. I hope that you are blessed and that I will talk with you all sooner than later. Take care and goodbye.